Shalom. Welcome back to Issachar Forum, a prophetic think tank. This is Les Lawrence uh, coming to you from Elisha Vision Ministries. Glad to have you with us. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your faithful uh, word that you have fulfilled, Lord, through all the generations and now in these last days are bringing everything to pass that you promised. Thank you for your faithful love uh, for Israel and the restoration that's in process. We just bless Israel. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem today in the name of your son, Jesus, Yeshua ben Jehovah. Amen. Well, glad to have you with us. Uh, let's get into the news. I like to start, of course, with my blog. You can find it at www.elishavision.wordpress.com. And I uh, did a couple of them this week. One is a cartoon from Dry Bones. Uh, there's a commentary on the uh, controversy in the United States about the uh, Clinton uh, Foundation and the uh, possible conflict of interest. Uh, it's a great cartoon. I'll just uh, mention that the title of it is called End of Season Sale, Pay Now, Play Later. <laughs> yeah, you might want to look at that cartoon. And then the uh, article I wrote this week was called Revival of the Ottoman Empire. And uh, I know I've been talking a lot about Turkey in the last couple of months, but uh, I think that's one of the most profound prophetic events that's been happening all summer and continues uh, with uh, the, the president of Turkey, Recep Erdogan, being recognized by the Global Muslim Scholars Group as the supreme leader of the Muslim world. And uh, then, of course, the, the failed coup. They said that two days after the failed coup. And he's been cracking down, turning Turkey into a, his own caliphate almost, <laughs> uh, and uh, basically taking control of all the every aspect of Turkey's government and society and establishing Sharia law and so forth. Very rapidly, things are changing in Turkey from a secular Turkey to a, an Islamic state of Turkey. And uh, it's just the first step, I believe, in the real caliphate being reestablished. But this week on uh, Wednesday, which was the 24th of August, uh, Syria invade. I mean, excuse me, Turkey invaded Syria, crossed the Syrian border, and it was on the very day, the anniversary of the Ottoman Empire's expansion to take over the Middle East, which occurred the beginning of that conquest of the Ottoman Empire taking over, was 500 years ago to the day that Turkey moved into Syria. And I believe that is uh, very profound and very important. And uh, and the Lord gave me a, a, a good news <laughs> scripture verse about that, that this too will pass no matter what the enemy tries to do. We've read the end of the book and we win. God wins. The Jehovah God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel, the God of the Bible, the God of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. We win. And, uh, Isaiah 4, verses 3 and 5 through 5 say this, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of Jehovah. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough places smooth. The glory of Jehovah shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of Jehovah has spoken. Amen and amen. I, I believe that with all my heart. Um, well, the the uh, there's several news uh, outlets that are talking about this. Uh, here's Charisma News headline: Did Turkey just make a move with massive end time implications? The Wall Street Journey head, journal journal headline said: uh, Turkey sends more tanks into Syria as Kurds uh, pull out of Manbij. Um, and, uh, so everything that is happening, I think right now this week is, is really related to Syria and, and Turkey's invasion into Syria. Uh, here's the times of Israel. Syrian Kurds rebuff retreat demand as Turkey threatens to intervene. And what we have is a very complicated situation. The Kurds are the, are the fighters that have been supported by the United States and they have been defeating, uh, ISIS in many places. They've taken over a number of places and taken a lot of territory away from ISIS. And the Kurds are considered the best fighters in the Middle East. And that's who the U.S. have been backing in in the, uh, Iraq and eastern Syria. But in western Syria, uh, there's this confusion now because Turkey, who's supposed to be our ally, 
considers the Kurds their mortal enemies. They've got Kurds in Turkey, there are Kurds in Syria, and Kurds in Iraq. And the Kurds want to have their own country. <laughs> and uh, Turkey feels threatened, so uh, Turkey's demanded that, that the ones who just won the Battle of Manbij and kicked out ISIS, that now they must leave and let Turkey have the, the town. And they want the Kurds to move east of the Euphrates River. And the Kurds are saying, we're not willing to do that. And so that's another thing that's kind of uh, confusing everything. And, uh, and we need to really pray for God's mercy and, and his uh, involvement in all of that. And then at this very, in the same timing, uh, Erdogan, head of Turkey, announced that he will fight the Kurds, the Syrian Kurds, as the same as ISIS. So he's actually, so we have the Kurds defeating ISIS, supported by the U.S., and now Turkey is going to attack the Kurds who are winning the war against ISIS. Very confusing and very disturbing. And uh, kind of the old cliche, you know, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> uh, stay tuned. Here's another article uh, from Debka File. U.S. Syrian warplanes nose-to-nose over U.S.-backed Kurdish positions. Two American pilots described Friday, that's this Friday, how they scrambled against Syrian bombers and fighter jets that were attacking Kurdish and rebel positions to which U.S. personnel are attached. So we have the U.S. defending the Kurds against the Syrians, but now the Turks are coming in and they're attacking the Kurds. And, my, my. Hmm. And uh, then just to make it even worse, uh, I mentioned that we're backing the Kurds in eastern Syria, but in western Syria, we're backing a group uh, that's called uh, Jabhat al-Nusra. But Jabhat al-Nusra is a group that has rebranded. Their original name was Al-Qaeda in Syria, and now they call themselves a different name. But we've been supporting them against the Syrian army. And yet, here's a story on uh, Jihad Watch that's rather shocking. Uh, the Obama-backed Syrian rebel group, quote-unquote, quote, uh, one of the one of their fighters called the mother of one of the people that we have been backing and said, "I severed your son's head." Called on the phone and actually said that to her, and uh, identified himself and everything. And uh, and that guy who cut off this fighter's head is actually Al Qaeda rebranded as Jabhat al Nusra, and is beheading people. And the U.S. is the one that's supplying weapons to them. Uh, it just gets worse and worse. Well, let's jump into Israel and what's going on there. There's quite a bit going on also this week. The, the uh, Palestinian Mufti, the top uh, clerical religious Muslim authority in the Palestinian Authority, uh, the Mufti of Jerusalem, uh, said that all of Jerusalem is Islamic. And, of course, the Palestinians have been trying to peddle that propaganda lie for for 10 or 20 years, uh, saying that there's no evidence historically whatsoever that there's ever been any Jews in Jerusalem. It's always been Muslim and blah, blah, blah. And now the Palestinian Mufti himself is saying that all Jerusalem is Islamic. That's in Israel Today magazine. Another article in Israel Today magazine. Uh, this is an interesting headline. I'll have to explain it. The headline is, after conquering Jerusalem, Jews will try to take Mecca. Now, the headline itself is part of that propaganda thing. They're saying that Jews are trying to take Jerusalem and Judaize Jerusalem. You know, those of us, of course, who know the Bible and, and take the Bible as more accurate history than most history books uh, understand that the Jews have been there for 4,000 years, 3,000 years since David made it his capital, and, uh, and yet uh, they're accused of conquering Jerusalem. But when you read the story, it's it's almost it's one of those things you can't make up. What they're actually upset about, and they kind of completely uh, freaked out, is that uh, is that in Jerusalem they want to build a cable car to take tourists from one part of Jerusalem up to the Temple Mount, up to the uh, olive uh, the tree, Mount of Olives, and in the Lion's Gate. They want to they actually want to just make it. Uh, easier for tourists to move around, but that's being interpreted as conquering Jerusalem, and they're 
the, the Palestinians are absolutely uh, livid and they're opposed to this. And uh, they're, they're just furious. The Muslim officials are furious. The head of the Supreme Muslim Council in Jerusalem called the cable car a dangerous provocation and part of a larger effort to Judaize the city. <laughs> my, my. Lord Jesus, bring revelation. Well, another article in Israel today is interesting. Israel is the first to deploy autonomous military robots. They have robot vehicles that are now patrolling uh, the border between uh, Israel and, and their neighbors in several places. Uh, uh, several militaries are currently working on a range of uh, unmanned but and also autonomous vehicles, but uh, this summer Israel became the first to actually deploy such machines to active duty. And uh, since mid-July, fully automated self-driving vehicles have been patrolling the border of the Gaza Strip. And uh, that's kind of interesting. Just a little bit of technology there. Another article about, about technologies from uh, Prophecy News Watch is drone swarm, drone swarm technology, a harbinger of Revelation 9. Um, the U.S. is developing uh, small little drones, just a, a couple feet, uh, three feet wide at the most. But they've they've now successfully been able to launch 30 of them that will fly in complete unity. And in other words, one person can actually direct 30 of them. They move as a flock. And if one gets shot down, they have computer code that actually they reform the group and keep on going. And uh, and they're able to actually carry, uh, they can, of course, cameras, but they can even also carry uh, ordnance if they, you know, on a small scale. Uh, and guess what the name that the, of this swarming technology is? Here's the U.S. Navy's name. It's called the Low Cost UAV Swarming Technology. And of course, fun with acronyms. You know what that is with the acronym? Locust. And that's what it says in Revelation 9. The scripture in Revelation 9 actually talks about uh, swarms of locusts being involved in the judgments in the last days. That's just too amazing. I think you, you might want to look that up. It's Revelation 9, 7 through 11. And uh, it actually uses the term locust type creatures. And uh, you might want to just look at that. But uh, we have the technology, as they say. And that's the, actually the name of it. Another article from Israel Today uh, magazine, UN wants immunity for terrorist employees. Uh, I spoke recently about the fact that World Vision was infiltrated by a Hamas uh, spy who actually was able to redirect over $52 million that was given by World Vision to be uh, to help rebuild Gaza. Instead, he, he actually was able to move that money into Hamas so that they could rearm and build tunnels and so forth. And, uh, of course, he was arrested and, and exposed. Uh, but here's another story about the same time uh, an employee for the United Nations uh, agency, the, the, the uh, UN Development Agency, UNDP, in the Gaza Strip, was also arrested for the same thing. But the UN says he's working for us. That he gets diplomatic unity, I mean Im immunity, diplomatic immunity. But uh, Israel was having none of it. Uh, Israel, quote, Israel rejects the claim that a person assisting a terror organization recognized by the international community su as such as Hamas could enjoy immunity. Uh, that was the foreign ministry spokesman uh, speaking over the weekend that uh, there's no way that Israel will give him immunity just because he works for the UN. The fact is he was supporting Hamas and he directed uh, funds from the UN to Hamas just like uh, the other guy did, uh, Mohammed Halabi with a world vision. Well, um, article here from uh, another site, uh, uh, Almas Daran News, this is a Lebanese site, I think it is. Lebanese Christians found with Bibles and deported from Saudi Arabia. This is a true story. 27 Lebanese Christians have been arrested and then deported to Lebanon after being found with Bibles in their homes and praying. Uh, so there you have uh, Saudi Arabia, one of our partners in the Middle East. Uh, here's an article from... Uh, Israel National News, uh, 
Angela Merkel, a head of Germany, says Germans told to stockpile food and water in case of attack. For the first time since the end of the, of the Cold War, Germans are told by their government to stockpile food in case of attack or catastrophe. And of course, they have a cat catastrophe building with a million and a half Muslim immigrants in the last couple of years in Germany alone. Um, there's a great article, I can't show you the pictures, but on uh, Israel National News uh, called Israel circa 1900. 115 year old photos of the Holy Land. And they're really kind of interesting uh, period photos from 115 years ago. And you could find it by just saying, if you search Israel circa 1900, I'm sure that would come up. And another one on Israel National News. Uh, there's some good news. Tel Aviv's Jerusalem fast train on track for 2018. There's going to be a train that goes directly from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. And uh, it's on schedule to be finished early in 2018. And it'll greatly cut down the time. Uh, you'll be able to go from the airport to Jerusalem in under 30 minutes uh, with this new train uh, that'll be open in just a couple years. Uh, then here's another article on Israel National News. Uh, and uh, this is actually quoting Roseanne Barr, who formerly known as a comedian uh, in uh, Roseanne show. Uh, but she's a very uh, active pro-Israel uh, supporter, and she's against Clinton. She says a Clinton victory will be the death of Israel. Actress and stand-up comedian Roseanne Barr warns the Clinton, the Clinton White House, a Clinton White House, would be disastrous to the Jewish state. And I thought that was kind of interesting. <laughs> and uh, so that's kind of what's happening right now. Let's just have a word of prayer as we close. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the things that you're doing. And I thank you that you give us your view of what's happening in the Middle East and with Israel. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for the rains as we move into the fall and the rainy season, Lord. Just resupply, Lord, all the water for your land and your people. And bless your land and prosper and restore, we pray. Thank you, Father. In the name of your Son, Yeshua, the Messiah, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for being with us. And we'll see you next week. Shalom, shalom.